Hello and good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Biz First in Focus. I am Shahin Jarampati, your host this evening. Well, just to give you a recap of last week's discussion when we spoke to Ramal Jasinga, the president of the National Chamber of Exporters, where we spoke about the crucial impact exports are currently having in Sri Lanka. And uh, Mr. Jasinga was critical of the fact that exports have uh, seen a rise uh, in the during the first quarter of this year. And he also speaking on the, the economy of the country, he said there are positives and negatives, but focus on the positives. But, and this year, this week rather, we are speaking to Rohan Nanekara, the chairman of the R Group International and an honorary consul of Hungary. Mr. Nanekara, thank you very much for joining us on the show. Thank you for Mr. inviting me. Mr. Nanekara, you seem to be a uh, you seem to be very much in love of Hungary. And Hungary is a country in Europe which is quite in the shadows, but quite peaceful. Let's speak about Hungary for a second. Okay. Uh, I have been the consul for Hungary for 24 years. And um, you quite rightly said, I mean, I'm, I'm very fond of Hungary uh, because the people have been very nice to me and, and, I, and they have always been appreciative of my work to them. And when I was uh, called upon to assist them to establish an airline, I, I, I agreed to do so. And it has taken me 13 years to establish the airline, and it's now registered, and we're about to take off uh, to 22 countries every week. And, and second phase is to fly over to Middle East and Asia. Third phase is to, to go to North America. So we had the fullest support of the Hungarian government and, and, and the authorities. Uh, this company has no investment from the Hungarian government or anybody else other than my group of companies. And uh, it's, I should say it, is, uh, it, looks, it looks good and, uh, and, uh, and I'm proud to be uh, from Asia and doing something in the European Union. Uh, Ms. Narakara, let, let's get on to the subject of yeah. the uh, airline further during the interview. Okay. But first, let's let's get through the topic of Hungary. Okay. See, you're not just someone who just lives in Hungary for a couple of years. You've also been uh, honoured by the Parliament of Hungary a couple of years ago. Let's speak about that. That's right. I was honoured twice. Uh, twice. I was decorated twice by the Hungarian government. And the last was uh, I was hosted to a reception by the by the, the president of the Hungarian Parliament, and it was uh, it was a gathering of of uh, all the leading people, and uh, I really enjoyed it. And they showed the appreciation and uh, appreciation for my work over the years, and also through uh, the tsunami where I, I got down uh, two aircrafts of Hungarians with medical equipment and etc. And we did a lot of work down south. And we saved a lot of lives and we gave us all a lot of medical treatment. Ms. Nareka, let's now get on to the topic of uh, this airline you started in Hungary. Okay. Uh, you said it took 13 years. It took me, yes. There obviously must have been quite a couple of challenges in this process. Quite a couple of challenges because, uh, because according to EU rules, uh, one has to be highly connected with the, uh, with the European Union to get permission. And therefore, the Honorable Prime Minister and, and, and the president of, of, uh, of the parliament and, and Mr. Peter Siarto, the minister in charge, all of them were great help to me and a lot of encouragement. And therefore, I, uh, they ensured that I should not stop or turn back. So that kept me going. And now at last, the company is registered. It's called Ronan Air. And, and we are about to uh, start flying within the next six weeks. Oh. Mr. Nanakara, being an Asian in a European country is generally, given the current context, is not easy. And given all these obstacles, you've started up a business as big as an airline in, in Europe. What were the challenges? How did you overcome all of these challenges? Well, challenges I overcame by, by the support I had from the government of Hungary and the respective uh, ministers. There is 11 ministers in the Hungarian government, uh, and uh, they have been very, very supportive of my efforts because they wanted an international airline. They had one many years ago, 15 years ago, but that had a uh, uh, fatal uh, bankruptcy situation. So they decided to have uh, 
like me as I'm as my as my parent company Ceylon Carriers, founded by my father, late Charles Nanakara, was very much involved with the tourism industry of of at that time Eastern Europe. We brought in thousands of Eastern European tourists every week to Sri Lanka. And when Hungary decided to close its trade mission in Sri Lanka, they approached my family and, and asked whether we can represent them uh, as the head of the consulate in Sri Lanka. So my father looked at me and said, he's a man you should talk to. So I got on talking, and, and every visit to this uh, Eastern Europe, as now it's called Central Europe, I was very fond of Hungary. Uh, because the people are very, very nice, very friendly. Uh, I always consider they spicy food than, <laughs> than, uh, than the other Europeans, so it, it suited me very well. Uh, Ms. Narekar, uh, let's speak about Ronania for a second again. Um, describe, us, describe to us what kind of an airline Ronan Air is. Ronan Air is, uh, is, is program and plan uh, to run as a scheduled airline, uh, scheduled airline on, uh, and we are starting with 22 cities every week, and uh, and continuing on to Middle East, Asia, and then as a third phase to to North America. So, we want to publicize Hungary. Hungary is located, in my opinion, Hungary is located very well in in Central Europe. And it's a pity that it has not been a hub up to now. So my discussion with the, with the respective uh, higher-ups in the Hungarian government, I explained to them, it's a wonderful opportunity. We should, we should develop this. And they fully agreed with me, not as only, as a, uh, only as a tourism hub, but also as a cargo hub. Because once you enter Hungary, the whole of uh, EU countries are open. Currently, uh, globally, globally, in particular in Europe, there's a crisis in terms of security, especially airline security. So how is your airline coping with the situation at the moment? Well, you see, the security uh, by, by the world bodies are very strict today, are very strict today. And then uh, you have to comply to every, every bit of it. There is no shortcut out of it. So we have proper security people trained and uh, and and we hired them also uh, a lot of security services a lot of security uh, uh, things uh, uh, has to be from europe because uh, they are more trained more equipment wise they can handle so we had uh, we have taken in about more than 100 foreigners who will who will be serving ronania some of them have already started doing the pre ministries and uh, Safety is number one in our airline or any other airline in Europe today. Uh, well, Ms. Nanekar, we are going to cross over for a short commercial break. Okay. Uh, we are in discussion with Rohan Nanekar, the chairman of our group international and an honorary consul of Hungary. I am Shanj Rampati and you are watching Biz First in Focus. See you on the other side. Hello and welcome back. You are watching Biz First in Focus and we are joined by Rohan Nanekar, the chairman of our group international and an honorary consul of Hungary. Ms. Nanakara, while you have plans to expand your airline towards Asia, any plans toward any plans towards uh, having direct flights from Europe to Colombo? Yes, of course, uh, having been born, uh, born in Sri Lanka is nothing but my obligation to help Sri Lanka and assist in tourism and cargo. And uh, as far as my findings, my research is, it shows that Sri Lanka is seriously lacking of, uh, of tourism from the Central Europe and also going into further into, uh, into, into territories of Russia and Azerbaijan and all these places. They are, uh, these people have money, but we are not tapping them correctly. We are sticking to the uh, good old Europeans. Is They are not really doing very well right now financially. So I would like to, to develop that market for Sri Lanka. And, and I will, there are seven uh, bilaterals, gives me seven flights a week to, to Sri Lanka, out of which I'll be using more, some of them to have direct flights between uh, Central Europe and Sri Lanka. Znanakara, you said uh, Sri Lanka is not tapping the correct markets in Europe. Having said that, 
our national academy here in Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka Nyala in itself is having a bit of a crisis. How would you recommend that we get out of it? Uh, let me be frank, and uh, now I'm in the airline business, and I know that when you choose destinations, and you, when you choose routes, you have to have the proper equipment. Useless flying big aircrafts on short holes, like for India. It's before you, you, you go up, and it's time to land again. So fuel burn is very high. So there are small aircraft in the, in, in the world which are fuel efficient. Of course, it can carry 70 to 100 people, but that's more than enough. You can do two rounds, three rounds, but the fuel efficiency is very much greater. And that is the plus sign of Rona Air because we go to destinations where the jets cannot come because jets uh, cannot operate short haul flights uh, without burning uh, heavy fuel. And uh, turnaround time is very big. So they all. So now, for example, if you want to go from uh, Hungary to Switzerland, people have to go to Europe, either Frankfurt or Munich, change planes, and then then go. By that time, it's about four and a half hours. By that time, Ronanay goes, and Ronanay is coming back. So that is that is simple. Uh, you do. It is not rocket science. It is just just getting the correct aircraft and 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 getting the correct configurations because it's a short flight so so there is no to give full uh, full meals and blah 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 and and the customers like it you go in the morning you can come back after after a few hours Ms. Nanakara, sri lankan airlines in fact has made a small restructural process where they've uh, where they're gradually abandoning uh, massive flights for for long haul flights and they are going towards what you recommended uh, so do you think this is a good move or it sh do you think it should have been done long time ago? Well, it should have been done long time ago. Plus, even today, the fleet they have is, is not short haul flights. You see, they, are, they could go to Middle East and places like that. Certainly not to the Indian cities, which is very short haul flights. So it's, uh, it's a crime that kind of uh, fuel burnt and uh, operation cost is very high. So how do you think Sri Lanka should, you know, learn from what, what we can call the mistakes, if you must? So how do you think we can, you know, use this as a, as a um, how do you say, is this, use these practices as an example and get out of what we are right now? You see, num uh, I also feel uh, the correct type of aircraft must be used. Secondly, uh, people who run this at the top must be professionals who have av aviation experience. What happened, unfortunately, in Sri Lanka is uh, not only to Sri Lanka and Ireland, but many places, they appoint people of their favorites or their relations and all that. And this is a crisis when it comes to, to, uh, to run an establishment profitably. So it must be uh, taken into consideration that without profits, nothing, uh, nothing will remain. So, so we had to may be profit-oriented and uh, that's what we have done. We are very strict with our, and, uh, with, with our expenses, and we have taken uh, multitask people. You can't say you are taken to the office to do this, but then to make a cup of tea, you, you need somebody else. It doesn't happen in, uh, with Ron and Nair. They all said in the agreements, employment agreements, you have to be multitasked. Ms. Nanakara. Like we've been speaking uh, all this while, Sri Lankan Airlines is in a massive crisis right now, and they are in fact uh, looking for a partner or a company to manage its operations. Uh, first and foremost, what is your take on that? Uh, my take on that is it will be very hard to get uh, other companies to come and manage Sri Lankan Airlines. It's a nice uh, Sri Lankan Airlines is a uh, is a good has a good name. And unfortunately, now these things are going the wrong way. Uh, but if you get proper professionals in, and also, uh, also it's it's top heavy number two. Uh, number three is that, um, if I may say so, it has too many people and too many unions, and this is the crisis here. And. Uh, the, you cannot do anything in this. Uh, most of the things in this country you cannot do because they will go and protest marches and this and that, and then 
then it upsets the whole business. And we are a small country. We can't have so many protest marches. We can't lose so many um, work, work hours. Work hours is very important for a small country like, uh, like, like Sri Lanka. We have to, on top of that, we have a lot of holidays. Nowhere in the world there are so many holidays. So these, these all put together, it's a crisis situation, not only for Sri Lanka and Ireland, it's a crisis situation for, for, for many of our government and non-government, even to the private trade. So this is, uh, this is sad, but it has to be corrected. I think the government can do it. Uh, by about, from what I think, this is, a, uh, this is the only government that should be able to do it. So others, others are, in my opinion, others are a little radical and that, uh, that is not the way to go. And, and too much of democracy is not good. To, uh, mm -hmm. Democracy is good to people who, un, who are educated and who understand democracy. So too much of uh, democracy is, is not good and it's not practiced even in Hungary. Well, Mr. Nanakara, we have to cross off another short commercial yeah, okay. break. Pretty interesting conversation I'm having with you. Well, uh, like I said, we are in conversation with Mr. Rohan Nanakara, the chairman of our group, International and Honorary Consul uh, of Hungary. See you on the other side. Well, welcome back to Biz First in Focus. We are joined by Rohan Nanekar, the chairman of our group, International Honorary Consul of Hungary, where he's speaking about the beautiful land of Hungary and uh, uh, how uh, we could use his airline, Ronania, to promote tourism in Sri Lanka. Uh, Mr. Nanekar, like I said a couple of seconds ago, how could Ronan Air, uh, how could you help uh, in terms of Ronan Air uh, promoting tourism in Sri Lanka? Uh, as I said earlier, having born, being born in Sri Lanka, it's my priority to help Sri Lanka. And uh, Sri Lanka is, is a country that no other country may, can match. But it needs innovation, it needs, it needs thinking, must be able to think out of the box. That is one of the things that I train my people, even in Europe, to be able to think out of the box. Then you get the ideas, and you have to encourage these ideas to, to go to get results. And uh, Sri Lankan people by nature are very good people. They, they, but only problem is they have been brought up in a way everything has to be told. They cannot think by themselves and go. only a very few people can do that. So our, we must be able to train our, our children from school days onwards and by the parents. Let the children think out of the box. Let them be innovative. Let them do, if they do 10 things, maybe eight might, eight might be good, two might be wrong. So don't pull up them for the two mistakes. You have to encourage them because children can do a lot of things when, when they grow up. And they must be exposed to the world. Unfortunately, Sri Lanka is an island, so not much people can go abroad. Uh, it's expensive. Uh, whereas Europeans, you get into the car, I can go for dinner to Austria and back uh, in the evening. I can go to Italy and come back. In, in four hours I go to Italy and I'm, I can spend a week, uh, weekend and come back. So unfortunately we are a country surrounded by the sea. So going abroad is a big thing. And whereas it is not for the average people in the world. So education is everybody says, uh, Go study, go and get a degree, uh, or do this, do that. But these are only piece of paper. At the end of the day, the experience is what counts for a human being to grow. And that human being will contribute to the country. Uh, that government alone cannot do it. A few individuals cannot do it. They have to make a whole, whole lot together from childhood days to, uh, to get them to be able to think out of the box. Thinking out of the box is very important. We are just stereotype and we can think only in the box. If you tell them to do this, they, they do it. But that's not all, that's not enough. Mr. Nanakara, you say think out of the box yeah. now, right? Now, uh, Sri Lanka is known for, for exporting tea, garments and tourism. That's right. Now, right now, the exporting of tea, the tea industry is also, flux, uh, also deteriorating gradually. So how can we think out of the box to, to, to get past the situation right now? Well, you see, um, if you talk about tea, I mean, 
we had the, to me we had the best in the world but are we marketing it correctly are we uh, putting good programs backing up with good marketing procedures so these are the things we have left uh, for one or two tea companies in sri lanka and they are done well but what about others there are a lot of other other people who is they are given i don't agree that give everything free to everybody nothing is free in life when i went to hungary yeah nothing free i slept on the benches in the railway station i i have been uh, cutting short not staying in hotels because i finish one country then i get to the train in the night so i sleep in the train and i get off the next day so i i i have gained one day's uh, hotel accommodation so these are things they are small things giving free 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 i have seen government uh, government officers going and they live the best of life and they bring nothing to the country what they see also i don't know what they see why they can come and implement it high government officials and i'm very sad about it so these are the things that uh, i feel very sorry for my country it's a good country and this is the only country that can, that has so much of nice beaches you can change your climate within a few hours and you can go up to the mountains there's tea there's gems there's beaches there's wildlife i mean where in the world can you get this in in a short area india or africa you go you, you you can go for wildlife and spend days but this country shows everything in a diversity every diversity is available in a in such a short time so we people has to has to get out of this box and start thinking putting up hotels alone is not do uh, it's not enough we have to create the interest we have to create interest so these are things and then also if i may so i might be i might be blame for this but i don't care because i uh, i love my country uh, too much of religion is also not good there are take, take thailand for example they are more buddhist than us but they are rolling in money with tourism where are we going wrong so these are things that our present government is energetic and and the honorable prime minister uh, is has the wisdom has the uh, how he knows how to go to the world but all the others must back him up and we got a excellent president also who is very honest who i admire very much and uh, and i think these two people must be given all the encouragement to go forward and develop this country some another too much of democracy is not recommended how can how could you draw the experiences of, of hungary and sri lanka to a parallel how could you draw these experiences with, with sri lanka well first and foremost hungary people are honest they are not the richest people in uh, in the Euro- european union but they want to reach they have a aim they have been told look at germany look at france let's go to that uh, those levels and nothing less so when you do that uh, people become automatically uh, law abiding not only the hungarian laws but also eu laws because they are uh, integrated uh, uh, countries so one has to you can't take a car and drive according to hungarian laws here in the germany so you got to i mean for example the autobahn is unlimited speed but hungary has speed limits so you got to be able to know these things and and and, and turn yourself accepting these things and uh, hungary has a rule uh, recently put uh, you can't take even a glass of beer and drive you want to go for a party go for a party after the party take a taxi home if you drive a car if you get into a, out of your gate with with half a glass of beer you're charged and cameras are all over so so people have got dis- by them discipline very well discipline is very important in a company or in a country so I, i as for my company nobody comes late because i don't say good morning i say good evening hmm. so they all fall in line here and abroad that's the only way to do no need of fingerprinting machines and all that if you, if you are tough it's not a bad toughness it's to get the discipline and to get the production out of out of your we are paying the salary they ask so produce that's all so 
it's a matter of how to get things organized. Uh, I, I think I must defend Sri Lanka on one point that you mentioned yeah. in terms of drunk driving. I think uh, the police department here in Sri Lanka is quite strict in terms of uh, driving under the influence. Even if it's a small uh, magnitude of alcohol, you're charged right away. We have to wrap up. Thank you very much for joining us. Like I said again, well, there you have it. The chairman of the R Group International and Honorary Consul of Hungary, Rohan Nanikar. Just a few messages he gave. Sri Lanka needs innovation. We need to think out of the box. And this government, according to Mr. Nanakara, can do it. It is the only government which is capable of doing it. But the question is, are we doing it? This has been Beast First in Focus. I'm Shahin Jirampati. Good night.